Welcome back to Gadget Girls. It's time to kick back and relax at the Sideshow Cafe with Janelle and Dr. Maria Karam, where anyone can use, experience, and evaluate emerging technologies. This is one of the first of its kind, a public usability lab, a place where science and social interaction merge. When we think of lab research, most of us think of very sterile environments. But Dr. Maria Karam has brought her research to the field in this cafe setting where she can use the general public to test out her equipment. Now she's a specialist in computer human interaction and has got two projects going on right now. Why don't you tell us a little time bit about them? Okay, the first thing is the Moda Chair, which is a system that translates sound into vibration so that you can feel sound on your body. Okay. And the second uh, technology is the eye gesture system, which is computer vision recognition technology uh, that can be used as an input device to control your computer applications. Cool, now you held up that card, the computer talked, and I felt it and heard it in the chair. So this emoji chair I'm sitting in has all sorts of voice coils on it, and they're in the arms of the chair, in the back and underneath. Well, I have the sound from that computer going into this chair. So okay. what happens is uh, the frequencies that are present in music are split up into eight separate channels okay. so that we have the low frequencies at the top, the high frequencies at the bottom. And what happens is as the music plays, your body is exposed to the content of the music, the vibration of the music along the skin and effectively you are going to be able to feel music rather than hear it or so, in addition to. So you're turning my body into an ear? Yes, exactly. Why are you trying to develop a, a feeling of sound? What applications does this have? Well, we have the potential using computer technology to explore a whole new sense with our bodies. So we, we've never really used our skin as a hearing organ. So what we're trying to do is expand our ability to process information and hopefully uh, learn a new sense. This is, this is like the new high for music junkies. You get that the auditory and the tactile experience when, when we always talk about, we talk about feeling the music, but now we can feel the music. I mean, that's deep. Yeah, <laughs> that is deep. <laughs> I have to talk about this card because you, you held up the card, was it the pink one? Yes. To the camera on the computer over here. And the chair is telling me what track should be playing next. Yes. So what are you doing with this? Because I'm going to put that down now. Because that is really, really neat. You're talking to the computer with, with the shape or with the color. This particular algorithm is using color recognition. Okay. So what happens is you train it to, to track color. In this case, we're using pink and green. And what happens is as we move the objects through the screen, we can train it to recognize movement and we can map that movement onto a particular function. So for example, okay. I have it on to uh, telling me what song is playing, uh, starting or stopping the uh, music player and switching to the next track. Do you want to try to turn it on? Sure, let's see if we can turn the music on. Does it see it? On okay. off. On off. And now drop it so it doesn't see anything else and the music should start playing. Yeah, there it is. Awesome. And I'm feeling it in the emoji chair. <laughs> In theory, and what we're, we're trying to achieve with this technology, is the ability to recognize human gesture and movement in the similar way that humans recognize each other's movement. So what happens when, when this infant grows up, when, we, when, we learn, when it learns to see shapes and learns to see everything around it, and even maybe to hear what's around it too? What, exactly. what do you see the, like, the real potential of this technology being? Um, what I see and what other people see is what we're calling ubiquitous computing, uh, which is it would be an integrated system which incorporates uh, cameras to receive visual information and speakers and microphones to deal with audio information. And effectively, you would like to be able to interact with your house or your car uh, in a similar way that you interact with another person. So for example, you would be able to walk into your house and the computer system might sense that you've arrived, uh, provide you with a greeting, perhaps turn the kettle on or put the coffee maker on so you could have your, uh, your after work tea or coffee. And further, it might be able to detect when you are in a particular room. You could train it so that it knows what you want to do in that room. So when I walk into my stereo room, it puts the music on and using voice recognition or the gestures, I might be able to get it to change the volume or to change the lighting. So it, it essentially can control all of the electronics in our house mm -hmm. uh, simply by recognizing our movements and our gestures or by processing our, our speech. That's absolutely incredible. It's such, it's such a real Star Trek concept, eh? You got this computer that you can talk to and give it commands and, and uh, 
It could probably tell you what's in your fridge, exactly. what's gone bad. It can tell you what the temperature. Yeah. Oh, that's so neat. So, Maria, thank you so much for uh, letting us come here to your coffee shop. It's been really exciting talking to one of the world experts in human-computer interaction. That's It's a really exciting field of technology. And I have to say, I'm really excited to see where this technology goes. And maybe in a few years, we'll see this in our homes and uh, in our offices. Hopefully. Great. Thank you. Thank you.